I received an interesting question about the karmatic effects of shamanic actions. And here we are again in a way hitting this, um, this difference you could say. Um, where we are actually using concepts which are on a very different layer of existence. So if we are talking about karma, we are ultimately talking about the hermetic tradition. Uh, so this teaches us if we want to move to one very specific place in the cosmos, how to attain this. And karma yoga is one of the persons uh, of the methods for ma maneuvering your own spirit to one very specific position. But if we're talking about the first two messiahs of light, who teach us about harmony, beauty, and about power and strength. Um, then we're not so much concerned with maneuvering ourselves to a specific place in the cosmos. It's also not, you could say, the effect of their teachings. So in shamanism, uh, we are basically teaching ourselves how to be strong, how to control our emotions, how to control our thoughts, how to control our bo physical bodies, how to control our energy bodies. And this action of yeah, learning self-control, improving the self-control, teaching other people how to have self-control. Um, ultimately it is giving, uh, creating a harmony between our incarnation and our souls. Um, but karmatically it does not move us from one specific incarnation to another specific incarnation. Shamanism does not determine uh, the form of body we will incarnate in or the qualities of the body we will incarnate in. Shamanism ensures whatever body we incarnate in, our spirit will be able to control it, will be able to master its thoughts, master its emotions and use whatever talents are part of that incarnation. So in that respect you could say um, shamanism is, you could say, a, a investment that regardless of where karma will uh, yeah, make you end up, you will not be too harmed by it. You will have a lot of freedom within every form you take. So if you have no shamanic training and you end up in the body of, I don't know, a mouse or a dog, then you're very much trapped with the emotions, the feelings, the instincts, uh, which go together with being a mouse or a dog. If you have a lot of shamanic training, you can still incarnate in the body of a mouse and a dog and you will have access to all the capabilities of mouse and dog, but your spirit won't be limited to the actions which are typical for a mouse or a dog. Your spirit will be in control. And everybody knows that Certain animals can be extraordinary or special, or certain, even certain plants can be extraordinary or special. And they are so special and they are so unique because the spirit itself is not captured by its form. So in a limited way, you could say shamanism is creating a sense of enlightenment, that the person is very free regardless of form, rather than limited and trapped by it. Also, to understand karma correctly, we have to let go of the yeah, Western idea of judgment. Um, yes, there are laws, but the laws of karma are not about judging right from wrong. It is not you punish those who do something bad and you reward those who do good. Um, it is very possible for a person to be very evil and to really build up a very strong karma. And the opposite is also possible, because karma is ultimately about finding a form which is suitable to you. And depending on what you do, you develop a tendency to have a certain type of behavior. And the form you take will ultimately be so that you can um, yeah, be in the best possible place. So it is not a system of punishment. It's a system of adjustment. 
So for instance, if I like to hunt, I see everybody as my prey and I'm a very voracious hunter. Well, then maybe I will incarnate in the form of a shark, because then I can do what I do. My behavior, my form will be perfectly attuned to my behavior. The same if I'm, for instance, a rapist. Well, if I enjoy raping women, then I'll probably incarnate as an orangutan or some other species for which rape is the natural and normal way of procreation. And then I can rape all I like. But what you're, of course, most people are wondering about is not so much how to attain a form to yeah, gratify my primitive bestial urges, but rather a higher form. Well, the most important thing for which makes us human is that we have curiosity, that we have flexibility, that we want to find out things, that we want to try out things. So if a person loses their flexibility and they become really stuck in their habits, in their tradition, in their rituals, then they will go back to an animal form, to a more primitive being, because humanity is in a way wasted upon them. But if you look at certain, yeah, what you could call higher sins, uh, like pride, envy, jealousy, um, greed, um, they go perfectly well together with the human form. In fact, if we have a lot of these yeah, sins, we are almost forced to again become a human because animals don't suffer from these sins. So, that's very important to have a correct understanding of karma. And what happens, for, if you would be indeed practicing shamanism, is that you're teaching your spirit how to improve itself. What would that mean for your next incarnation? Well, it's very likely that maybe you will become a, a sportsman or uh, a yogi or a martial artist, um, something like this. It could be very attuned to this path of self-improvement. It can also be a more subtle level that indeed you yeah, are more going into spiritual development and spiritual development practices. This is also very natural for a person who does a lot of shamanism. But the next step up from shamanism is not actually to be very uh, controlling of your next incarnation or trying to control your next karma. The next step of shamanism is to be in beauty and be in harmony to learn your role within society, because shamanism's first responsibility is to be able to take care of yourself. Next stage which comes after is how to be able to take care of others, how to manifest your power, your skill, your self-control in such a way that it is actually good for others, it's good for humanity, it is good for uh, nature spirits, it's good for the animals, it's good for the stones, it's good for the plants. And here we go actually already from shamanism into a uh, more paganistic culture, more paganistic frame. Where as a shaman you have a responsibility to, in a way, yourself and the competition with others. It becomes already much more about cooperating with others finding your niche within society. And once you are able to find your niche within society, then the next step becomes karma and trying to move from one niche to another. But if you cannot even manage to create one niche and to do that well, then wandering about or blundering about into other niches is not going to make you more skillful at being in that niche and you will have to keep on running from disaster, from one disaster to another, from one failure uh, into another failure, unless you develop your shamanic tendencies, unless you develop self-control and the ability to adapt yourself, to change yourself so you can fit into any situation, so you can survive in any situation. This is what shamanism is about. So. The link between karma and shamanism 
It's a very, yeah, iffy one. Um, I would say rather that, that karmatic action um, is a result of shamanism. Because if you live somewhere and you cannot control your thoughts, you cannot control your instincts, you cannot control your emotions, you cannot control your physical body or your energy body, then your karma will not be controlled by you. Your incarnation will be your yeah, straitjacket which has your spirit trapped. And that straitjacket will create a similar straitjacket in your next incarnation. So you will go from prison to prison to prison to prison to prison because you cannot control your karma without shamanism, without having developed self-control, self-mastery, self-awareness. So I hope this clarifies the relationship between karma and shamanism a little bit.